Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Awesome. Well, this morning before I got to church, I started texting some of our team in Oaxaca. And, um, and I text them this. I said, hey, remind the people that if they change the way they think, they're going to change the way they live. And, uh, and I'm very adamant about this. As a matter of fact, I was going to start a new series in about a week or so called Puzzled, but I'm going to push that back, and I'm going to keep going on this series called Thinkers. And the reason I want to do this is because I want us to, to really get the revelation that your problem is not your problem. The problem is how you think. You see, your eyes are not the problem either because here's the reality. You don't see with your eyes. You see with your mind. It's all a matter of perspective, perception, and how you view things in life. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to just keep hitting this hard, and we're going to renew our mind. We're going to change our life because you know what? There's so much more that God wants to do in you and through you, and, and it's not enough for us just to settle with what we have right now. It's not enough just to settle with what we're doing right now. God wants to expand you. God wants to increase you. God wants to, he wants to progress you. God wants you to go further. He wants you to go stronger. He wants you to go wider. He wants you to go deeper. But that takes a renewed mind. And so I want you to, to stay engaged in these next few weeks. I know I only have a little bit of time to, to speak. But last weekend, I was talking to you about the children of Israel. And their problem was, was a huge problem. Their problem was not that they were in the wilderness. The problem was that they had the wrong thinking in the wilderness. Then God shows them a picture of what he's trying to give them. Do you know that God has an actual plan for your life? You weren't born by accident. You were born with a divine intentional purpose. But so many times we live and we coexist with our environment, not realizing that God has something more. But like creatures of habit, we, we've learned to think a certain way, and we stay there for so long that it kind of becomes who we are for the rest of our life, and then nothing changes. The children of Israel, God is showing them a picture. We read this last week. To, he sends them out to the land of Canaan. He says, hey, in this land, you're going to find milk and honey, and you're going to see supersized fruit, and it's going to be amazing, and I am giving it to you. They go in there, right? Moses picks out a few group of leaders, and they, they all go in there for different tribes. Come on, what's your tribe like right now? I wonder what your tribe, th how they think. How does your tribe think? How does your family think? And so they go in, they see everything, they come back, and they bring the report to all the people. They say, hey, it's just like God said it, man. Man, we saw it. It's amazing. It does truly flow with milk and honey. It's got fruit, man. It's got grapes, man, the size of, I don't know, a bulldozer. They were literally, they're huge. And, but they said this, but then they came back, so they, they expressed everything. They expressed all the truth of God. You see, they had a lot of passion. They came back with passion. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It was a passion. Have you ever met passionate people? They're like, yeah, I'm looking at one. <laughs> but, but here's the deal. Listen, but passion without truth is not true passion. The anchor of passion of people of God is truth. They, they exchange lies for truth. And how many times do we exchange the way we think instead of accepting what God's trying to give? And we know they said to the people, we see, we saw the giants. Everybody say giants. giants. And today I'm going to continue this giants. He says, we saw the giants in the land and we saw ourselves as grasshoppers. Check this out. Check this out. They not only said we saw ourselves as grasshoppers, but they saw us as grasshoppers too. They had already made the assumption. They had already made the final conclusion that that's the way they see us. You see, how you see yourself, right now is how they see you. It's the truth. Whether you like it or not, it is the truth. And so I'm not speaking to you for the next few weeks you know what, on, on, on the power of, of positive thinking, which I get it, it's awesome, but that's temporary. The next few weeks, I'm going to be talking to you about the power of God who changes the way you think so that he can change the way you live and you can accomplish so much more. It's not just let me change so that I can get more. No, it's like let me change so that I can get some and give some. It's not just about you. It's about other people. When you change the way you think, you give others permission to change as well. 
But when you stay the same, then your tribes stay the same. The truth is this, the Israelites, they decided 1.4 million Israelites died in the wilderness because they weren't willing to change. Don't you dare die in your whatever amount of years you have to live in your wilderness. No. Listen, yes, we all, we'll all experience wilderness experiences, but it doesn't mean that you got to camp there for the rest of your life. Yeah. Come on, we are passing through. We're not living there. Last week I said, God said, come on, dig your, dig your ditches, right? What do we do? We dig a ditch and we get in it. Dig ditches. He wants to bring. What do we do? Dig ditch and let me stay in it. No, we don't live in ditches. We dig them. So that God can fill them. God wants to fill your mind with new ideas. God wants to fill your mind with innovation. God wants to fill your mind with thoughts of peace, with thoughts of a future, with hope. God wants to fill your minds with purpose, with, with plans that, that are amazing, exciting. So listen, the limitation right now in Oaxaca, Mexico is not resources. The limitation of Oaxaca, Mexico is the way they think. And I'm going to confront the way they think. As a church, we're not going to let them stay the same. They will change. They will see the best and everything God has for them. But listen, just because you live in America and you have your, 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 your home, your, your car, your career, that's not enough. That is a sin just to live, to have and coexist with the things that I've, I've accomplished on this earth. No, I want, I want to be known as, man, the Mauricio without limitations. See, here's a question for you. When people think of you, how do they think? How do people think about you? I don't give a rip. You should give a rip. You should. Because the word spreads. <laughs> how do people think about you? I ask this question because of this. When we think about David, we think man without limitations. That man... He had no limitation. And so it's interesting how sometimes we're trying to accomplish things with people, but sometimes the way we think about them is very clear because, you know what, we know they have the potential to do whatever it is that, that God wants to do in them and through them, but, but just because you have potential doesn't mean you have the will to do it. And God wants us to have a will to constantly change. I know I don't like using this term, but it's the truth. I finally accepted it. God wants us to reinvent ourselves continually. Reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself. You've got to do it constantly. Because if you're not reinventing yourself, you're going to stay behind. Kind of like culture. Right? Uh, I, there's so many churches that shut their doors every year in America, 11,000 churches. Why? Because we ain't changing, praise God. That ain't biblical. That ain't godly. Okay, you go ahead and you say it ain't biblical, it ain't godly, and you stay behind and your door's closed. We don't compromise. We don't water the gospel down. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we'll change the methods. Amen? And we got to reach a dying world who needs Jesus. But you have to start stirring up. There's got to be a personal revival in you. It's not enough any longer to say that you're a Christian. It's time to live Christian. It's time to live the word of God. It's not enough to memorize scriptures. Fine, you've memorized 40 scriptures. But which one do you live? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so what? So is he? Who is you right now? Ask your neighbor, who is you? <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with asking that. If you don't like it, oh well. If not, your tribe is going down. Here's the truth. You are a product of your parent, good or bad. But like, like, like my children, I got my 22-year-old daughter and I got my 18-year-old son. I know many of you are like thinking, how? He's like 24. How can you have a 24? I get I, I get that all the time, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, I, all the time. But, but, here's the, here, but here's the truth. My tribe will do more than me. As for me and my tribe, we will serve the Lord. And they will serve him even more and go further. They'll do more than I will. Why? Because they're smarter than you? No, they just, they're going to live longer than me. I'm already at the half mark. They got, a, they got, they got way more years ahead of them. Are, are you listening today? 
And so first, for, for you note takers, open the Elevate Church app. I got notes for you. You can fill in. First point here, look, your thoughts, first point, guys, your thoughts either deny access or allow access for the Holy Spirit to do a work in your life. Let's all read that together. One, two, three. Ready? Go. Your thoughts either deny access or allow access for the Holy Spirit. So here's the deal. Old Testament, when you think about David, you think man without limitations. Let me tell you something. The, the Holy Spirit in Old Testament Bible, okay, was only poured out by God into specific individuals for specific jobs. In other words, if David were here today and he was, and he was preaching on this, this platform, he would say to you and me, be like, Mauricio, here's the deal. <laughs> I had the Holy Spirit only for certain projects. You, on the other half, have the Holy Spirit seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and you have no excuse to limit what God wants to do in your life. You have zero excuses. That's what I love the word of God because the word of God is not meant just so that you can feel religious happy. The word of God is for you to be challenged and confronted in the way you think. The word of God is what changes the way you think. It changes your perspective. It changes your point of view of life. The word of God literally not only changes your perspective, it changes you. And so, David, we know that being a man of no limitations and, and being willing to, to think beyond himself, man, when, when we think of this man, this man was ready and willing to do anything God called him to do. However, others didn't see that about him. And so many times, here's the problem with, with, with us, with, with humanity, is, is that we limit ourselves based on what people think of us. Think about it. Social media is awesome, but it's also a killer. You know what? For some of us that we're always on social media, if not careful, eventually, you start learning how to live vicariously through someone else's life while you're wasting yours. Because you're just hoping and wishing I had that, had him, had her, had that, had this, while you're wasting life. And not realizing that there's something specific and unique and special that God wants to do with you. God wants to do something. You Listen, the man you see today, okay, fine. Many people are like, oh, well, that's you, Pastor Mauricio. Well, listen, I, 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 I'm not the same Pastor Mauricio I was 20 years ago. Uh, many of us, we just, we, we, we see, we see the, the Instagram shot of like, hey, but no one saw the process <laughs> of hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, nobody saw the real, right? There's just so much. Everyone's hat full. It ain't happening. That's not the way it is. Everyone lies on Instagram and social media. You, a lot of, lot of just. It doesn't happen. It, it takes, it takes a process of changing the way you think. I grew up in poverty. I grew up in, in, in gang-infested communities. I grew up in violence. I grew up in abuse. I grew up in all kinds. I grew up on welfare cheese. I grew up in all those things. But let me tell you something. Just because you grow up in a certain circumstance or environment doesn't mean that you need to stay there. I didn't need to get out of the hood. I needed to get the hood thinking out of my mind. You, you just got to get that out of your mind. Oh, if I just get out of this neighborhood, I'll be better. No, you won't. Bro, you, you just took the hood with you. You're still hood. I just get a nicer car, man. I'll, no, you can't afford it, man. You changed how you think, and you can literally change how you live. But it's hard to accept that truth because it requires work. You know what the work is? It's creating a new habit. That's work. That means that you have to consistently do something for, for at least 21 weeks straight. And then change starts happening. You can't just get rid of something and not replace it with something. It's not going to happen. God created this amazing brain. Man, he, he is so, God's deep and how he neurologically created everything, how everything functions. Listen, when you're feeling pain in your body, it's not that you're feeling pain, it's that your brain is telling you there's pain. 
It's so amazing what the brain does. We'll go deeper into that. But let's look at this. So David, David is now confronting the same Israelite thinking process of so many years. David said, I'm going to be a game changer. I'm going to change a nation. I'm going to change my family lineage. As a matter of fact, we know that Jesus came from the same lineage, the bloodline of David. I'm telling you, that's the bloodline we have. And so check this out, 1 Samuel 17, 20, 30, fast, rapido. It says, when Eliab, David's oldest brother, come on, how many ever get into it with their siblings? Anybody have any cray-cray family here? <laughs> You're sitting next to them, just don't put your hand up. <laughs> just nod at me. David's oldest brother heard him speaking with the men. So David shows up, context of story. We got the story of David and Goliath. There's battle, there's struggle, there's war. Uh, David shows up and he's like all into it. He's all excited about it. David shows up on the scene. The brother hates him. He can't stand him. And he's like, hey, man, he burned with anger, the brother, at him. And he asked, why have you come here? Look at this. This is just so sad how, how, how his brother would put him down without him really realizing that he's being put down. He says this, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? In other words, you suck, man. We're here doing real stuff while you're just leaving your few sheep. I mean, why did he have to use the word few? Why couldn't it just been, hey, why would you leave your sheep in hanging? No, he wanted to antagonize him and to let him know that you're small. So many times, many of us, we are who we are because someone has spoken small into your life. And you have stayed stuck with small. Small. And so his brothers are reminding him, you're small, David. We're big, even though we're afraid. <laughs> That's a good point. You need people, the only reason people antagonize is because they're afraid of themselves. They're insecure. So they feel better when they talk crap about you because <laughs> they're really feeling like crap. You can say crap in this church. It's okay. <laughs> okay, it says, and with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Listen, there's a difference between having confidence in self and then having confidence in God. But the brothers have, they, their perception was like because of his confidence, they thought that, you know what, this dude is just full of pride. He's got a wicked heart. No, here's the reality. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, there are three things that God gives you. He gives you protection, he gives you identity, and he gives you provision. And when you know your identity, you ain't afraid of nothing in the sense of God's call. There's going to be challenges. But when you know who you are in Jesus, man, you're coming, you're showing up, you, you look different. You know what, I love it when I come across men who are not afraid of circumstances like our missions team. A lot of circumstances, but nobody was whining and complaining, oh, we have to cancel our trip. That didn't happen. They, they were like, okay, what are we going to do? They started getting together and they started thinking together like, okay, what can we do? How can we use this to our advantage? What's going to happen? How should we handle it? As a matter of fact, in the first service, one of the guys said, you know what, with all the rain that was dumped, it's okay. We needed water in order to clean the floor that was just being made, by the way, for our dining hall. And so they said, let's just use all the rainwater and use that as our water to clean it all up. So they were working in the rain, being drenched, but they used it for their advantage. Take your situation as an advantage point. Take it as leverage for you to go to the next level. Don't just sit there and whine and look at your palm because the palm is not the palm. The palm is how you think about the problem. Are you with me? And so he says, listen, he says, David says, verse 29, he says, now what have I done? In other words, now what, guys? Why are you guys talking crap about me? What's the problem now? And he says, can I even speak? And then he turned away to someone else, and he brought up the same matter, and the men answered him as before. In other words, everyone looked down on David. Everyone looked down on his life at his, but no one saw potential in him. But David showed up on the battlefield not to be a looky loo Man, he showed up to get in the battle. Listen to me. If you want to live an awesome life with Christ, you got to stop being a looky-loo and you got to get in the game. You can't just keep looking. Yeah, it looks awesome, but let me tell you something. Awesome takes a lot of work. Right? We need to get out of the woe is me and we got to get back to the wow is he. Man, he's wow. He will wow you in every situation. 
And so David shows up and he's talking to everybody and, and he's a man with mission. And he, he realizes that, you know what, everyone's talking down on him. But because he was so confident, listen, sometimes you have to, you have to go against the grain and stop, stop talking yourself out of God's promise. And start talking yourself back into God's promise. And so David just kept talking himself into it. They were talking out of, they were trying to talk him out of his call. He was talking himself into his call. He talked himself so much into his call that King Saul got word of this. Hey, listen, you just keep being God fitting and you watch and see, you'll get God's attention. And then this King Saul, which we know that, you know, he was already a bad king by this time. And man, God was through with him. And but he heard about this little scrawny kid, this, this little redhead, freckled. Scrawny little kid shows up. Is that pretty good, uh, Gus? Is that a good description? <laughs> shows up and, but but saw but King Saul heard about this this kid that was talking like, man, I can bring down this Goliath. And mind you, Goliath was not just any man. He was a nine foot nine inch tall dude with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. That's nasty. <laughs> and 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 Saul said. Bring me this guy. So Saul is probably thinking special forces dude, you know what I'm saying, all buff, cut, you know, arms of steel, you know, abs. And, and then he sees David show up like, what the, is there, is, is there someone? And so Dave's like, no, it's me, man. <laughs> He's like, what are, you, what are you doing here, man? And so Saul was all like, man, dude, you're, you're, you're nobody. But let me tell you something. But David was... David had a response. You see, your circumstance is set up for a testimony. And so David took that opportunity. He says, no, let me tell you something. Listen, I, I'm not just talking. <laughs> I, I, I want to I speak to you from my experience. I am experienced. You see, uh, when I guarded my, my father's sheep, I, I, I protected them from the lion and the bear, oh my, and I took them out. And, and here's the deal. And the same God who helped me overcome the lion and the bear is the same God who's going to help me overcome this uncircumcised Philistine who even thinks that he can come here and talk smack about the children of Israel. We're going to change that today. And Saul's like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and so Saul was like, okay, well, dude, you have no gear. Listen, sometimes we won't do something until we have the whole package together. It'll never work that way. You see, Saul says, okay, well, you don't look like a soldier, so let's make you one. And so he takes off his, 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 his armor and everything. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Gus, since you are so great at describing things and people <laughs> should come up here. And so Saul comes and, and, and he says, all right, listen, uh, I need you to wear my armor because you're not going to embarrass me, man. You know what? You got to look like a soldier because right now even I laughed at you. And he starts putting on his, his gear on him. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 really, this is, this is really, this is, this is really intervention, your wife wanted me to do this, she, she wants you to change your look, bro, she wants you to step up the game, is that, is that good, yeah, hey, yeah, you can't move, exactly, and so, and so, come on up, why don't you just come on up here with me, and so, and so, and so Saul says, hey, listen, uh, he starts putting on his gear and, and stuff, and David looked just like Gus right now, kind of uncomfortable, just like, this ain't me. And how many times does the enemy try to put an identity on you that does not belong to you? But you think it's you, so you start living like it, not realizing that you're really wasting life. And the only thing that you have that's so precious that you can never get back is time. So stop wasting time so that you stop wasting life and you can start accomplishing everything God called you to do. But first got to change the way you think because if not, you'll just allow everyone to keep putting the labels on you and you'll never accomplish anything. You can sit down. Stay with the jacket. Let it inspire you. Listen, and so David was like this, all stiff. And, and so listen, here's the truth. There's only one truth that anchored David. And the only truth that anchored David was this. David said, if God called me to slay giants, then giants I will slay. When you know who you are, you're not going to care what everybody else thinks. If God called you to, you finish this sentence, then you will slay the giant. But the greatest giant of your life that you're going to slay is your thinking. We have too many thoughts that are limiting what God wants to do with you. And it's time to make a change. If you change the way you think, you're going to change the way you live. So we know that all of a sudden now 
David's like, I don't need that. He, he, he removed everything off of him. He says, man, listen, Saul, I, I love the fact that you're trying to give me your armor, but, but this ain't me, man. This is not how God created me. Uh, you got to accept me for who I am and, and, and just let me do what I do with God, and that's it. And so we know that David goes out for Samuel 17, 43 through 44, says, and so uh, this is uh, the Goliath. He says to him, hey, why are you coming at me with sticks, bro? See, Goliath also was expecting to see something different. He says, why are you coming at me with sticks? Do you think I'm only a dog? The Philistine cursed David in the name of his gods. He says, come over here, he said. I'll feed your body to the birds and the wild animals. Let me tell you something. Once you know who you are, you don't care what people think about you. You just don't. You don't care about when they say you're a low life. Okay, great. That's your opinion. And you know what? I don't have to put much value in that. I think so many times we put more value on others' opinions than God's. You drive that opinion. Get off that dead horse. Come on, get on God's plan. There are three things that David did, and I'm ending the, the message here. Everyone told David that he had no potential, but check this out. But David was able to, number one, he was able to go beyond his family's relational uh, limitations. You know what? Don't, don't think that because you grew up in a family of drama that you have to be drama. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't think that because you don't come from a great pedigree that now you're going to have to accept that and just keep living that way. No, you have a new pedigree and you have a new lineage and you have a new blood and his name is Jesus. You need to go beyond your family. I want my kids to go beyond me. I love my kids. I want them to be inspired by me. I want them to be inspired by my wife. I want them to be inspired by our accomplishments. But here's the truth. At the end of the day, I tell them, but you know what? You need to accomplish everything I called you to do, and it's going to be greater than me. Number two, David was able to go beyond King Saul's leadership limitations. We know that Saul, he lost his leadership. Why? He disobeyed God. He wanted to do it his way. He thought that his way was greater than God's way. But what did God say? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So when you have an opinion about the church, you're wrong. <laughs> Let me say that again. When you have an opinion about the church, you're wrong. The only opinion you have is the one that God already gave you, and that's trust me. Number three, David said, I go against Goliath's skill limitations. You see, don't think that your skill is so bad and big. Let me tell you something. The only reason you have a skill to do anything is because God blessed you with it. Take God completely out of your life, you're nobody. Seriously. And sometimes we put more faith in our skill than we do with our God. Why do I say that? Why do I say number three? Here's why. Please don't mis misquote me, misunderstand me. Have you ever asked yourself, why did David take five smooth stones with him? Why did he take five? Like if he was so confident to take Goliath down with one stone, why did he take five? It's this simple, guys. Though we are to be confident in God, that does not mean that we will not have doubts sometimes. So I'm sure that David knew that one stone was enough. His faith was never in the rock. His faith was always in his Lord. So many times we put our faith in our skill, in our talent, rather than putting your faith on the one who gave them to you. So he comes with five, what, five rocks, my own personal opinion, okay, don't quote it, it's not Bible or anything, but I'm going to give you some ideas. I believe that David was such a great thinker that he thought this, okay, once I take a life down, he prepared and said, if the Philistine army then comes, chases me to kill me, at least I got four more rocks, I'm going to take four more people down. <laughs> that Okay. Or here's another one. If you keep reading 1 Samuel 17, 18, he begins to talk about uh, uh, Goliath's other four brothers that also were Goliaths. And they had six toes, six fingers. Six, they were looking nasty. So maybe the second thought is, hey, let me prepare in case those four brothers come after me. I got one rock for each one. It's called preparation. You will never have progress until you start having a system on how you will prepare to go to the next level. You can't just keep cruising in life, okay? Get out of cruise control and get back to driving what God is trying to give you. Amen? You can't just wait. You can't just wait. You can't wait. I'm just waiting on God. Okay, you keep waiting and stop blaming God. Anchored on truth. Anchored on truth. Stand to your feet, please. Let's get out of here.
If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.